Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome to Storytime, Alan Moore's Promethea. Long after leaving DC Comics and the established industry in general, Alan founded his own comics brand under the Wildstorm imprint, focused on creators retaining ownership of their creations, especially himself. America's Best Comics. In 1999, Alan wrote and published Promethea, an exploration of magic, art, and the imagination in a very pure form. The book is often very wordy, as it is mainly a stage for Alan to explore and dissect big ideas, but it is also the story of a superhero-like figure. Promethea is a living story, an idea form that can possess and empower human hosts as they tap into her. One thing Alan did at America's Best Comics to distinguish it from DC, Marvel, and the mainstream was to create worlds without established superhero communities, at least not in the typical sense. Promethea exists in a world which never had superheroes, but has always had science heroes instead, who do not usually wear costumes. Supervillains sort of pop up everywhere, though. Promethea is one of Alan's most ambitious and purely artistic works, and the art is astonishing. Very inventive, but it's not indicative of the brand in general. If you were to pick up and read, say, Top Ten or Tom Strong, you might find them much more entertaining in a traditional superheroic adventure sense. Promethea ran for 32 issues, and I plan to break it into three parts. This first part, issues, issues 1 through 11, will show you all the various versions of Promethea and set up the world, and she'll fight some villains, save the city, and punish evil, along with exploring the immateria, the endless world of non-physical reality, and lots of those ideas we talked about. Part 2 is an extended journey into the immateria and an exploration of every realm in the Tree of Life, as Promethea searches all the way to the godhead of all existence and the highest point of self in search of someone lost, all merely to help a friend. It's Alan's guide through the higher planes of existence, and it's just phenomenal. That's the real show to see, so don't miss part two. Part three will finish up the series and deal with Alan's version of the end of this world, more a revelation than the destruction of anything, as all that's lost is a paradigm of old ideas. In real world terms, it did reflect the end of Alan's participation in the ABC brand, however. As unbeknownst to Alan, Jim Lee had sold Wildstorm to DC, and Alan chose to walk away in 2005 to honor his principal to never work for them again, following the fallout from Watchmen. In fact, Alan had only extended the universe and tolerated the situation for a few years due to work that he had promised artist friends of his. Regarding the situation, he said it was better to go against one's own principles for a greater good than to have no principles at all. But that's all in part three, and I'll address it more then. Most of the book is Alan's exploration into his view of magic, which is also sort of his view of art and the imagination. It all sort of connects together, as you'll see. It might sound like heavy subject matter, but Alan has crafted some very charming, funny, and down-to-earth guides in, this, in the human hosts of Promethea. Now, let's begin. Alexandria, 411 AD. <sighs> well then, there is nothing for it. They are coming for me as they came from beautiful Hypatia. Best go now, beloved daughter. All my love and all my God shall be about thee as a mantle. F father Father, you will be killed. I know it. Oh, Father. Oh, no. Oh, no. Be strong, child. We shall see each other in the western lands. And, and, go. Go now, my love, or I shall weaken. Go. Come out, devil worshipper! Come out and face us! He is playing some trick. My thoughts are all queer. No, we... we must ignore his bewitchments. Let's do what we came here for. He... he is playing some trick. My thoughts are all queer. No, we... we must ignore his bewitchments. Let's do what we came here for. In Christ's name, make him stop. I'm going to be sick. Take that, devil. Our thoughts are our own. In Christ's name, make him stop. I, I'm going to be sick. Take that, devil. Our, our thoughts are our own. Again, again. Dear God, let this be done with. See, he is yet smiling. There, time claims him. Time and the radiant heavenly city. Uh, uh. Again, again, dear God, let this be done with. See, he's yet smiling. There, t time claims him. Time and the radiant heavenly city. New York, 1999 A.D. 
You were dropping off where? Sophie, not another interview for your term paper. I had mine finished like weeks ago. You're totally gay. Yeah, well, you're fat. If my term paper was a discourse on Weeping Gorilla, I'd have finished weeks ago too. Oh, you slut. Weeping Gorilla is completely the best. I mean, what was your paper on again? Prostitution? Prosthetica? Promethea, the radiant heavenly city. Promethea, the same name turns up in 18th century poems, early newspaper strips, pulp magazines, and comic books. That's interesting. Weeping Gorilla is just pointless. There is no point. That's the genius of Weeping Gorilla. So, who are you interviewing? Her name's Barbara Shelley. She's the widow of the last guy who wrote the Promethea comic book. Actually, her address is right near here if you want to drop me off. Hey, guy, here will be fine. Then you can run me over to St. Mark's place. I'm going to the limp gig, huh? You know, Stacy, this Shelly woman sounded like sort of a bitch on the phone. Given the choice, I'd rather be out with you tonight. Ah, uh, you want my body, you homo. Admit it. Listen, I'll see you in college tomorrow. Good luck finding about prolapsia. Promethea. This being 1999, Alan has written a few comedic moments for Sophie and Stacia where they casually use homophobic slurs, as was the style at the time. Try to see it as harmless as when Bill and Ted do it. Miss Shelley? Hi, I'm Sophie Bangs. I called last week about my paper on Promethea. Oh, you better come in. Thanks for seeing me. You must get lots of people asking about your husband's work. No, nobody. That's why I figured I'd better check you out. Listen, why are you interested in Promethea? On the phone you said something about folklore? Right. See, the name Promethea goes way back. She's first mentioned in this poem, A Fairy Romance, written by someone called Charlton Sonnet in 1780. Um, she's not a warrior in the poem. She's a fairy handmaiden. Mm-hmm. And then what? Well, then in 1901, the Hearst Syndicate run this newspaper strip, Little Margie in Misty Magic Land, by Margaret Taylor Case. Margie has this sort of fairy companion named Promethea. So there's a coincidence about the name. How's this folklore? Yeah, but see, little Margie ran until 1920. Now, during World War I, a popular story arose in the trenches about a warrior angel appearing to soldiers in need. She called herself Promethea. Eh, half of those guys had shell shock. Wait, it gets weirder. In 1924, this pulp magazine... Astonishing Stories runs a series, Promethea, Warrior Queen of High Brazil. This Promethea rules a science fantasy lost continent. A woman named Grace Branagh does some great covers. Listen, where's all this going? Astonishing Stories Fold, 1938. The publisher is bought by a company who turned Promethea into a science hero comic. This guy, William Wolcott, writes it until 1970, when your late husband takes over. Meanwhile, there's all these urban legends about people meeting Promethea. Miss Bangs. Look, I've been having second thoughts about this interview. It's late, and I'm suddenly real tired. If I was you, I'd drop this whole Promethea thing right now. It's a nothing idea, you know? Now, if you'll excuse me. Huh? But, but my term paper. Listen, kid. You take my advice. You don't want to go looking for folklore. And you especially don't want folklore to come looking for you. I don't believe it. Just like that. Out in the cold. Alexandria, 411 A.D. The young girl walks the desert in the night, alone. Father? Father, it's getting dark. I'm scared. Father? Father, please don't be dead. Please, please, please. I don't know where to go. I... <laughs> she falls down the dune and sees a lizard. Daddy? Daddy, you said... You said I'd be all right. I'm all on my own, Daddy. Please save me. You said there'd be gods. You said... You said they'd look after me. You promised, Daddy. You... promised. Suddenly a light illuminates the darkness. New York, 1999 A.D. Ow! Ah, sorry, we startled you there, young lady. Uh, please don't be alarmed. This is purely routine. You may recognize us. We're New York's resident science heroes, the five swell guys, and we're just out on patrol as usual. K-1. 
Kenneth here had one of his psychic flashes about you. You're not being menaced by strange, overwhelming forces by any chance. Uh, no. Well, I'm having a lot of problems with completing my term paper, but, you know, that's all. Hmm. So no extraterrestrial creatures bothering you? No government conspiracies? Ancient demon cults? Nothing like that? Uh-uh. This interview I was doing didn't work out, so I was headed over to St. Mark's Place to see this English band's limp. Kenneth, you've been a little off since your divorce. Heck, you know, I felt so sure. Come on, Kenneth, you were sure Betty wasn't sleeping with her aerobics instructor, too. We're sorry to have bothered you, miss. Good luck with your term paper. Uh, sure, no problem. Bye. Wow. Five swell guys. Wait till I tell Stacia. She'll hemorrhage. A dark shape follows Sophie away from her encounter. Sophie feels a presence. Hello? Hello. Ah! A hand extends from a shadow on the wall behind her, clasping her coat. Ah! She runs, leaving the coat behind. Ah! Oh, God! Jesus! Mom! Buddha! What do I do? I haven't done anything! I'm a college student! All I ever did was read books! What did I do? The hand comes from her own shadow and grasps her leg. Whoa! Wrong books. It throws her off of the bridge, to the street far below. Sophie is rescued by a glowing woman in a sash who runs and jumps from a power line, catching her in midair. <laughs> God damn it! Nope! You... you can fly! Can I hell? The woman catches a lower walkway and pulls herself and Sophie up. The Smee, as she calls the dark creature, attacks again. Promethea punches a hole in its center and throws it off the walkway onto the highway below. It is smashed apart by a passing hover car. Wow, you killed it! The Smee, don't be stupid, it's just winded. Come on, let's get out of here. What? Where are we going? Well, I don't know. Just somewhere we can hide up and delay the inevitable. Jeez, that thing cut me good. Ow. Yeah, there, that ought to do it. Okay, okay, maybe it won't find us for a while. Christ, I must be nuts getting into this at my age. Look, look, what's going on here? Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> well, that's a good one. I'm friggin' Promethea, you idiot. Alexandria, 411 A.D. Don't be afraid. You were lost. But now you are found. Now everything is well. Thoth and Hermes have appeared to greet her. Oh, uh, are you... Are you one of my father's gods? Come to keep me safe? No. I am two of your father's gods. I am Thoth Hermes. And I cannot keep you safe. Not in this present world. Why not? Our influence here is waning, our priests slain by those of the new god. A dark age is coming. Only in my world, the Immateria, can I protect you, and there you would no longer be a little girl. You'd be a story. W would I still be alive? Would I be able to come back and visit this world? You would live eternally, as stories do. And as for coming back, well, sometimes, if a story is very special, it can quite take people over. We'll see. Come along. Is your world very far? No. It is always in the place where you are standing. Tell me, child, what is your name? Promethea. All three vanish into the night. See, Promethea was a real little girl who lived in 5th century Roman Egypt. Her father was a hermetic scholar, sort of like a magician. A Christian mob killed him. Not uncommon back then, but the gods intervened, taking his daughter to their world of myth and fiction, the Immateria. 
Promethea became a living story, growing up in the realm that all dreams and stories come from. Sometimes she'd wander into the imagination of mortals. Charlton Sennett, the poet, Margaret Case, the cartoonist, and Grace Branagh, the illustrator and comics artist, William Wolcott, and writer Steve Shelley, they channeled Promethea. Some of them, taken over by this powerful living idea, even physically became Promethea. Either them or loved ones they projected her identity onto. Margaret Case, for example, became Promethea to help out in the trenches of World War I. During the 20s and 30s, Grace Brana took over. See, anyone with imagination and enough enthusiasm for the character can bring her through from the immateria by sinking themselves or others into the role. During the 1770s, Charlton Sennett's housemaid, Anna, became his dream love of Promethea, transformed by the poet's imagination as he wrote a fairy romance for her. Steve Shelley did the same thing. Only with his wife. Oh my God. You're the woman I tried to interview. You're Barbara Shelley. Kid, I pray to God you're not as dumb as you act. Yeah, I'm Barbara Shelley. Guess it's showing. Can't maintain the form, you know. See, it was my Steve had the imagination. He died in 91. Since then, Prometheus has been getting more like me. Can't imagine her any different. You, you changed back. Boy, oh, you're sharp as a tack, ain't you? I can't believe whoever sent that Smee thinks you're the next Promethea. M me Well, ain't it obvious? They must have sensed it as soon as somebody even became interested in Promethea. Told you you ought to drop it. But I can't be Promethea. We'd better hope otherwise. We got maybe half an hour before that Smee finds us. Do you write? Well, essays and poetry and stuff, but... Take this. Go find someone quiet and write about Promethea. A description, a poem, anything. And do it quick. A Smee is a semi-mindless elemental entity. It'll probably rape, kill, and disembowel us. Maybe even in that order. Oh, and try to relax. Sophie goes off alone to try and write her way into the spirit and legend of Promethea. After a few false starts, she has something. I am Promethea, the child who stands between fixed earth and insubstantial air. A dream? No. Thought, who yet treads matter's rain-soaked strands. And mortals are the sandals that I wear. I am Promethea. From mind's pure light I stoop into earth's dark, no, gloom. From fable's day, descending into fact's cold, waiting night. From lyric atmospheres to mammal clay. I am Promethea, the rumored one. The mythic bow that reason strains to bend. I am that voice left over once the book is done. I am the dream that waking does not end. The Smee is reformed and asks Barbara Shelley where Sophie is, but she's not talking, claiming Sophie doesn't have the gift. Not what I asked. Where is she? Ah! Who sent you? Is it the temple? Is it the Jack Bows or the Night Queen? Oh God, I'm telling you, the girl's not the one. She's some useless kid. She's nobody. She's... I am Promethea, art's fiercest spark. I am all inspiration, all desire. Ah, oh God. Ah, oh jeez. Imagination's blaze and mankind's dark. I am Promethea. I bring you fire. <laughs> Sophie's Promethea burns us me with magical fire from her staff. Oh. I'm too late, then. Yes. <laughs> ah! Much too little. Ah! And much too late. <laughs> With magical lightning, Promethea eradicates the Smee. Barbara, I must get you to a hospital. You, you are incredible. You are better than I ever was. 
Well, you look better than Grace Branagh. You've lost a lot of blood. Don't try to talk. But I got so much I have to tell you. There's so much you need to know. You need to know about your predecessors, Margie Case and Borpil Wolcott and the rest. You need to know your enemies. It was probably the temple sent that Smee. Then there's the Immateria. Hush, Barbara. There'll be time to tell me later, when you're well. Now that I'm back, I have all the time that there is in the world. Time and the radiant heavenly city. Next, the judgment of Solomon. Judgment of Solomon. Promethea brings Barbara Shelley to the hospital, where she is quickly placed in a medical pod. Barbara is still trying to warn Promethea of the danger she is in. The Smee was the least of her problems. She is correct, because a gang lord and occult magician named Benny Solomon represents a group called the Temple, and he has called up a demonic host to attack and destroy the new incarnation of Promethea before she learns how to use her power. At the concert, Stacia receives a call. Yeah, what? Yeah, this is she. Who's... It is not. Sophie? Well, what are you doing that voice for? What do you mean something's happened? Can you get over here? Where are you? A phone booth near the hospital? Sophie, that's miles away. Well, yeah, I can meet you out back, but you'll take forever. Yeah, okay, I'll be outside. It's only because this band sucked worse than gravity. They... Sophie? Sophie, don't hang up. Don't... Damn, what a bitch. Well, if she thinks I'm waiting out here longer than ten minutes, she can smooch my butt. Who does she think she... Ah! It's She-Ra! Holy God! Save me from She-Ra! I'm... Stacia, be quiet. I'm... I'm Sophie. In a way, something's happened to me. Now, when I take my hand away, please don't make any noise. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Good. Now, I can't explain this. You'll have to trust me. I fused somehow with... I don't know. Some kind of living story. I've become the character I was writing my term paper on. I'm Promethea. A and this is a problem how, exactly? I mean, you finally got boobs and you're all special effects and everything. It's like you're living in a fairy tale. Yes, but I don't know how to shut the storybook. Not before I get to the part with the wolf. So, you just wrote a poem about Promethea and you became her? That's right. Do you think if I want to be Sophie again, I should write about her? I don't know. Maybe you just acted more like Sophie. Come on, let's go watch the limp so you can hit on some really ugly guys and fall down drunk. Sophie doesn't act like that. Yeah, right. Look, I gotta pass out stamp on my hand. If I press it on yours, it'll look like you got one too. But what about how I'm dressed? And this caduceus? Look, everybody's gonna think you're a drug side effect or maybe some new fad, so just relax. You can cover your magic wand thing with that cloak or whatever. Now try to act normal. Hi, fat hippie guy. You checked me and my friend out a while back, remember? Look, we got stamped. Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Uh, come on in. Oh, great, they're still playing. Come on, you gotta see this Montelier guy. He's so lame. Um. Meanwhile, the demons in human form make entry into the club by walking directly through the bouncer at the door as he dissolves into melted goo. Stacia, over by the door. Jeez, what's going on over there? Who are those two men? Men? You mean you can see two men? Uh, well, yeah. Why? What can you see? Promethea sees the demons in their immaterial aspect, a winged bull and hawk astride gigantic beasts of war. Listen, lady, let's not make this any messier than we have to, okay? Nobody wants a big scene. Sophie, what do they want? Are they... Get out of here, Stacia. Get everybody out of here. They're demons. Don't even touch them. They're from a place much denser than here. You'd fly apart like steam. Hey, what you got under that robe? Uh-oh, Caduceus. She's packing heat. Screw this. Solomon said she was a walk-in. Caduceus? Hell, that's God stuff. No, maybe just a demigoddess. We can still take her if you don't lose it. The demons attack Promethea first, knocking her into the air. She fights back, though all anyone else can see is her alone above the crowd. 
she burns one of the demons with holy fire from her staff. <laughs> look, look what she's done to me. Ah, you're not a goddess. You're not a demigoddess. What in all the world are you? I'm Promethea, and there's nothing else like me. I'm the holy splendor of the imagination. I cannot be destroyed. <laughs> Those blokes, I, I can see sort of, well, animal shapes. There's a, what do you, what do you call a cow with wings? I tell you, that joke's in bad taste. Now, oh, for Christ's sake, come on, the place is on fire. <laughs> Sophie? <laughs> Prometheus draws a glowing pentagram which begins to tear the demons apart. They are forced to open a door into the immateria to escape with their lives. God, Sophie, that's just so cool. How do you know how to do that stuff? I don't know, I just... Stacia, I thought I told you to please this place, mortal. Why have you disobeyed me? Solomon told us she was a walk-in, just some spirit guide or something. I tell you, he made a serious error of judgment. I'm going to roast him on a bonfire of his own children. I mean it. Andrus, if we don't open this gate, we'll be ashes. Mortal? Moi? Mortal, I shall not tell you twice. You must... Stacia, she's right. You have to flee this place or... Well, you listen, Soapy Bangs. Maybe you got the worms on a stick and that stupid hat, but you're not the boss of me. Besides, this is my dream, okay? It has to be, because your dreams are all boring and about losing your address book. Stacia, still convinced she is dreaming, is unaware of the door opening behind her. Stacia, behind you. Huh? The demons open the door into the immateria, and Stacia is lost in the confusion. Promethea, I'll make sure I carve that in foot-deep letters on the diamond gate post of hell. We'll meet again. They've gone. They've... Sophie! Sophie, help me! Ah! Oh, jeez! Oh, jeez, I gotta wake up! Ah! Stacia, the cockadius! Grab the cockadius! You are... Kidding! The door to the immateria closes, taking Stacia with it. This is Texture Digital Update, New York Tonight. This just in. The Limp U.S.'s tour ended in chaos after a fire and reported homicide at Trotsky's at St. Mark's Place. Limp frontman Montel Miar Stiles is said to be distressed by the incident as to receive mental and spiritual counseling. In other news, Marv of the Five Small Guys has been taken to... South Tower Hospital after a disastrous confrontation with the painted doll. The doll himself has reportedly been killed in an explosion, the fourth such apparent demise this year. Meanwhile, one of Mayor Sonny Baskerville's multiple personalities, a shy albino named Doug, has confessed the charges of molestation. Doug maintains, however, that he himself had first been molested by another personality called Big Rudy. The case continues. Up next, Weeping Gorilla Mania. Is the popular morose monkey a cause of fan suicide? A bereaved mother speaks out. This is texture. Stacia? Next, Misty Magic Land. After losing Stacia and badly in need of guidance, Sophie's Prometheus seeks out Barbara Shelley in the hospital. Recognizing the woman who dropped her off, the staff welcome her in. I... Are you all right? Can you talk? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. It fixed me up with that clone meat stuff. <laughs> you know, it's funny seeing you being Promethea instead of me. I'm not finding it very funny. I don't know how to revert to Sophie. And these two things, the geisha attacked me. Now my friend Stacy is gone and... Whoa, did you say geisha? Yes, their names were Andrus and Marcosius. They said the geisha meant howling. Dear God, someone must be real pissed at you, girl. How'd you banish him? Let me guess, you used the pentagram, right? The five-pointed star? Y yes, I just seemed to know what was needed. Promethea knew. You'll find her and Sophie's personalities flickering back and forth at first. Just try not to go nuts, okay? Yes, but how do I stop being Promethea? What about Sophie's friend, Stacia? She just got sucked into nowhere. 
Wait a minute. What's this? You're saying some civilian got involved? Where'd this fight happen? At a rock concert. The demons opened this gateway to escape through. Stacia, Sophie's friend, was sucked through after them. Oh, jeez. Listen, this is very bad. Your friend, Sophie's friend, is in the Immateria. She's in Misty Magic Land. But that's where I... Where Promethea comes from. How do I get back there? Do I open a gateway like those demons did? No, no. That's physical magic. It's always sort of brutal and unnecessary. You ought to be able to do it in your mind. That's how you get back to being Sophie, too. Writing stuff down makes it more focused, but the imagination's the most important thing. So what, I just imagine this immaterial place and it springs up around me? Sure, imagination is part of the immateria. It's just the part closest to the physical world. All us vessels of Promethea have had different ways of getting there. Margaret Case used to yell, Misty Magic Land, arise. Grace Branagh had a painting in the lost land of Hybrasil that she sort of projected herself into. So, ah, uh, so if I were to kind of imagine, say, these columns growing up through the floor, just as an example... The ones with snakes and stars on top? Yeah, you're getting it. Now the trick is, you gotta believe in the columns more than you believe in this hospital. Imagine them more solid, and this world more ghostly. Barbara? Barbara, you're fading away. Good. You are too. That's what's supposed to happen. See, as Promethea, you're made of imagination. That's why you can make this journey bodily. You are where you think you are. Now, Sophie, she's flesh and blood. She could only visit the Emeteria in her mind. But I... I don't know anything about this place. I need you to explain it to me. Can't you stay with me, Barbara? Barbara? Barbara, where am I? I'm... Oh. Oh, my soul. Misty Magic Land. Oh, God. Oh, God, I know this place. I... We... We know this place. It's... It's like a recurring dream that I... That Sophie had when she was, like, nine or something. Or maybe she just dreamed she had that dream. Or she dreamed it once, but in the dream she remembered dreaming it before. Or... Hey! Hey, you! Stay focused, you stupid bitch. You're losing it. If you lose it here... Well, you really lost it. Promethea is greeted by Little Red Riding Hood. Hell, you could even go crazy. Know what I'm saying? Oh, God. Are you... I... I mean, you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get over it, okay? You're in Misty Magic Land now. And you gotta hang on to your clarity. You were losing it back there. But... But... I mean... You're exactly the way I imagined you. Well, duh. Listen, you're here looking for something, right? So, do you want me to help you? Or do you want to stand around here all day? I I suppose I'm here looking for a friend of mine. She got sucked into this place by accident. Uh-huh. So it's like this perilous quest thing, yeah? I mean, you'll be one in the dark woods right over there. I'm going that way myself. But how do you know that's where she'll be lost? Oh, come on. Where, where else do kids get lost in stories? You ever hear of anything titled Babes in the Supermarket? She's in the Dark Woods. Trust me. Well, couldn't she be in some other Dark Woods? There's only one Dark Woods. I mean, I ought to know. 500 years taking this friggin' basket to my friggin' grandma. Plus, they're a lot further away than they look. You notice that? Yes. Yes, I see what you mean. They're bigger, too. What I don't understand is why you should be the one to meet me. Because you were thinking about me, dummy. You even sort of mentioned me. But I haven't thought of you or mentioned you and... Oh. Oh, wait, yes, I did. I told Stasia I was stuck in a fairy tale and wanted to get out. Before the part with the wolf. Yeah, well... So much for that, huh? The two encounter a gigantic, terrifying wolf. Oh, God! Oh, God, look at it! I'm... I'm frightened! Why? Why am I so frightened? 
because you're facing the unvarnished idea without any adult defenses like distance or irony or whatever. You're seeing it like a child sees it. Plus, it's a fucking big wolf. What's not to be frightened of? Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. Not by the fucking hair on your chinny fucking chin chin, you fucker. Ho ho, why then, I'll huff. Fuck. Shit, where's the safety on this fucking thing? You, you've got a gun, but that's... Listen, Sophie drew a doodle of little... Of you, just after this movie Reservoir Dogs came out. It had you holding a gun and this captain saying, Let's go to Grandma's. Hey, I knew that. Shit. And I'll puff. But, I mean, the doodle wasn't really that funny, so Sophie threw it away. She threw a piece of paper away, maybe. Ideas ain't that easy to get rid of. Oh, and incidentally, you draw a gun like a girl. Goddamn piece of... And I'll blow your house in. <sighs> Ew, dog breath. Shit. <sighs> the wolf blows and Promethea and Little Red Riding Hood are blown away. Ow, fuck. Oh, oh, is, is he coming after us? Nah, he knows the rules. He'll wait for me over at Grandma's. I better haul the old bat out of his digestive tract. You go find your friend. She'll be somewhere nearby. These woods go on forever, but actually, they ain't that big. Listen, this gun is crap. I gotta find a kindly woodsman with an axe. You take care now. I... I will. Traveling on alone, Promethea eventually hears sobbing. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I wish I was dead. Stacia? It's so sad. It's all just so sad. <laughs> she gets the kids in the house. I get the call. Oh, God. We're all so unhappy. I understand that now. People are in so much pain. I never knew. I never knew. Stacia? Stacia, it's me, Sophie. Stacia, that person you're talking to. It's Weeping Gorilla. I know, and I understand what he means now. He isn't funny. He isn't funny at all. He's us. He's us, and he can't stop crying. I guess people change. Stacia, listen. He's an idea. It's just that you're experiencing it naked, at full strength, without any emotional filters. He's a symbol. Yes, he's a symbol of humanity. That's all we are, don't you see? We're the gorillas that weeps. Everyone said I should get Windows 95. Stacia, he's just a commercial icon who spouts self-pitying catchphrases. He isn't... he... he. Oh, God. Oh, God, that poor monkey... Why do pets have to die? I like country music. It tells the truth. You're right, Stacia. You're right. All those generations of people crushed by this terrible sadness. What's the point? What's the point of anything? Some days are better than others. I... I wanted to get you out of here, but I failed. Everything fails. We're all so useless. I just want to sit here until I die. What do you mean? You need more space? No. No, I have to get up. I know it's pointless, but... The garage thinks it's the clutch. No, don't leave me. Everybody I ever loved left me. They all left me. Those bastards. I have to believe there's hope. I have to believe... There's happiness. I hate my body. Can we hear that radio head track just once more? Pah! Prometheus socks the gorilla. And while he is dazed, they escape. Come on, Stacia. Let's get out of his range before he overwhelms us again. God, my eyes. They feel raw. My throat. I just couldn't stop crying. If I only understood what women wanted... This is a place where fictions and symbols are all that's real. Their intensity is undiluted. Yeah, that's 
Prosciutto talking again, right? A minute ago you sounded like Sophie. Promethea. Sophie Bangs is my newest vessel. Our psyches will align and synchronize, given a little time. Hey, don't worry about it. Multiple personalities are real big right now. What with the mayor being like 40 different guys. So are you going to click your heels and get us out of here? I fear that it is not so simple. What Sophie must do, what I got to do, is imagine my way back to New York. This is all so weird. When I get home, I need to find out all about Promethea and what she is. You'll help me do the research, huh, Stacia? Stacia? The wolf returns, and now he has Stacia in his paws. Grandma wasn't home. Leave her alone. You're not even a real wolf. You're just a big scary blob of stuff to frighten kids with. Promethea hits the wolf with her staff, unleashing magical fire. Ah. He drops Stacia. All the better to stop your hearts, my dears. Stacia, get up. We have to get back to our reality right away. Oh, jeez. Can't you hail a cab or something? Stacy, I'm serious. The story about the wolf probably goes back to the Stone Age. I I think he's older and stronger than Bermethia. We have to concentrate on New York. Concentrate? On fleeing in terror? We have to. Just shut your eyes and think about New York. Think about the noise and the smell. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. It's not happening. All I can hear is that wolf thing panting behind us. Try to turn it into the growl of traffic or something. Come on, Stasia. Help me out here. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, I think maybe it's working. Good. Just a little bit further. Try and make the scent of all these flowers and blossoms smell like pizza and exhaust. Spare change. Oh, gosh. Everything's blowing like water. It's like this rushing current. Did I just say gosh? Don't let go. We're right on the shoreline of reality here, and the undertow is terrific. Ah, Prolifia, I'm slipping. Just hold tight. Hold tight, we're almost... home. Promethea and Stacia have returned from the Immateria to our reality. Ah, ah, we're back. You can slow down now. No, I'm not completely back. Sophie's not back. I have to find somewhere away from everybody to imagine myself back into her. Yeah, well, that makes sense. You completely rule and have boobs and tattoos and stuff, so you want to be the desperate college geek. I'm not desperate. Stacia, shut up and help me think about Sophie. Well, she's about five, six or something, and lives with her mom, who's a total nympho called Trish. I think Sophie maybe got laid about four times, if you count that thing she dated in high school. Ronald. God, I remember. She pretends she's heard a black metal band to impress guys. She has this huge disfiguring mole on her butt. She's gay. I am not gay. Yeah, it's immense. Luckily, mostly it just looks like you're wearing giant velvet underpants. Uh, jeez. You gotta tell me that diet. You're evaporating. That's supposed to happen, right? I mean, are you okay? Propania? <sighs> Promethea. Promethea disappears as Sophie returns, still holding the pad and pen she used to write herself into the role. Next, a fairy romance. The modern medicine should be healing Barbara's body, but the magical infection caused by the SME can't even be detected by their instruments, and her health continues to fail, despite all their attempts to heal her. Barbara, in her astral form of Promethea, leaves her body behind and walks to the Immateria to confer with the other versions of Promethea who gather there. Barbara, we were wondering when you'd show up. Do close the door. You're letting in a dreadful smell of antiseptic. Sorry. Hi, Grace. I'm Margaret. Anna. Bill. I'm Margie. Why, I'll tell you, have I had a rough night. Like, first see this new teenage Promethea, then I get a slapping match with a smee. Now I think I'm dying. You poor darling. Have Harabelle and Metal Sweet fix you a drink and then tell us all about it. What's the new girl like? Flat chested and neurotic, I'll bet. Promethea, a fairy romance. Ah, uh, well, 
Yeah, pretty much. But I'll tell you, Grace, she's good when she gets into character. She just about vaporized that Smee. Thanks, girl, that's plenty. Oh, Barbara, honey, Grace is just being catty. We're sure she's fabulous. Bill, you think everything's fabulous. So, Barbara, does this new vessel have a name? Yeah, her name's Soapy Bangs, and she's a college kid. I'm just worried I'm gonna croak before I've shown her the ropes. Say, this is pretty good. What is it? It's a liqueur made from moonlight and cream of chameleon. Anna imagined it into existence the other day, didn't you, darling? That I did, Mr. Scrice. This new lass sounds to be as young as I. We should look in the star pool and see how she fares. Oh, you are being nosy. This is a fine thing, I do not think. Oh! Shut up, Margie. Can you see anything, Anna? My help I can, Mistress Bill. Is that the girl you spoke of, Mistress Barbara? Yeah, that's her. Last night she handled once me, two goetic demons, and a rescue from the immateria. Guess she's sleeping it off. Only two goetic demons? Darling, that's nothing. Shush, Grace. Let's see what she does. Sophie and Stacy awake in bed together. Ah! God, you're totally an enormous lesbo. Oh, you wish. Stacy, my head's full of pop rocks. Do you remember what happened last night? Yeah. Yeah, you're Propelia. Holy cow, Sophie. Promethea. But yeah, you're right. Holy cow. You know, when I woke up, I was still holding this ballpoint, the one Mrs. Shelley gave me. Come on, let's go get breakfast. Ugh. Morning, Soph. Oh, and your little pal. What time did you two get in last night? About an hour before you did. Both those coffees for you? Morning, Tris. You look great. Drop dead, you little moron. And Sophie, my coffee's none of your business, okay? Hey, Trixie, where's that coffee? It's Trish. I gotta hear you, jerk. Jesus Christ. You know, so, your mom is a vast whore. I sort of admire her. Yeah, whatever. This Promethea business is scaring me, Stace. I have to find out more about it. That'll make things more, I don't know, more real. We ought to just forget anything happened. There's real people trying to kill me, Stacia. Others before me have coped with this. I gotta be like them. What, you mean dead? I'm serious. We'll finish our cereal and go to the library. I can maybe find more material on Charles and Senate and those guys. Now, eat your chocolates, Pops. Taxi! She's like a baby crab, fresh hatched upon the tide line. She has to run for the safety of the ocean before the gulls take her. The temple already tried twice. I wonder who'll be next. I mean, I thought maybe the Night Queen. She always gave you and me a hard time, Bill. Oh, I'll say. That sulfurous slut got me killed, you know. Still, I hear she hardly leaves the underworld these days. Sophie pulls a fairy romance off the shelf. Hum, I do not like bad fairies. No, sir. Huh. Margie, darling, much as we all love you, if you don't keep quiet, I shall disintegrate you. Oh, look, Anna. It's your story the new girl's interested in. I, I, so it seems. I, I cannot say I like it when my tail is red. The pain of it is all too fresh. My baby, and how she was took from me. And him. I loved him, sisters. That I did. I loved him. I am alone. I stare into the table's wood grain and dare not look up. I say the words once more, I am alone. My wife is gone, my Emily. So too is Anna gone, my mistress, and with her my muse likewise departed. I shall say it yet again, I am alone. Charlton lives in the countryside with his wife, searching for inspiration in writing his latest poem. He finds it when his lovely young maid sparks a vision of herself as a fairy queen in him, and he begins to write about her as he sees her in his mind. June 7th, 1779 Well, Master Charlton, with Miss Emily away to see her parents in New Hampshire this next week, perhaps she'll get some work done. Actually, Anna, I've already made great progress, and it's thanks to you. 
To me? Why, sir, whatever do you mean? Well, I've partially based the leading fairy upon you, after this sort of daydream that I had. Here, if you like, I'll read some to you. Promethea, the shepherd understood, had wither glamours captivated him, with lips, with skin like polished betel wood, with ocean eyes wherein a man might swim. Her smile ethereal, magnificent, her lyric movements, her fragility, her gentleness, her orchidaceous scent enraptured him, enslaved him utterly. Phantasmagoria, made somehow real, yet delicate, perhaps to disappear, at his impetuous touch, his need to feel, her summer jasmine breath close to his ear. Charlton, more words, words bring me through. Unchained, the poet-shepherd's tongue took flight, such verse and poesy from his lips that poured. Anna, is, is it you? As night lends substance to the sylph of light, or goad the very heavens to applaud. No. She raised in realms of fancy, had ne'er known another's flesh, nor that warm mortal thrill of passion, how they loved each sigh and moan would halt the world, or bid all time stand still. Each kiss endured while mountains wore to dust, whole lives passed twi twixt each measured bedboard creek. So lost were they in that transcendent lust that they knew not the hour, nor day, nor week. Charlton's wife comes home to find him with Anna and leaves him. Embracing heaven, earth slips through our hands, worldly affairs fragment and fall away. We reach that place which no man understands, where reason falters and blind love holds sway. Master Charlton, was it ever, ah, was it ever me you loved, just, just for a little, ah, oh, a little while? Ah, oh, Shadow, the baby, the baby, the baby's wrong. You can't, ah, you can't make children with a story. Did you, did you love me, a Anna? Anna, did you? Ah, no, ah, ah. Anna, it's coming. Oh, dear Lord, the baby, it's... Oh, God, Anna, the baby, it's... It's not a baby. It's only half real, Anna. It's... Their child, such as it was, evaporates in his hands. Anna? I only made one grave which some found queer, but there was only Anna to be buried. After all, we did not have a child. Rather, we had the dream of one. And that dream, why, it vanished, melted quite away. Save for these wretched, ill-kept journals, I have written not a word since then. My muse, my muse is gone. I see the fairies only when I drink now, which is all the time. My love is not amongst them. It was not Anna that I loved. It was the fantasy I'd spun about her. Now that fantasy had fled, I sometimes doubt it ever truly happened. And was not instead some dream of mine. But things are ever thus with fairies and romance. I am alone. After finishing the story, Sophie looks up to find herself alone in the library darkened. A voice calls to her from the shadows. Sophie. Huh? Uh, how did it get so dark? Where did everybody... How did it get so dark? Who? Where did everybody go? Ah! Either phrase would work nicely on a tombstone, wouldn't it? Wait a minute. What's happening here? Who are you? Did you ever see a dream walking? Well, I did. Did you ever hear a dream talking? Well, I did. You're Sophie Bangs, isn't it? 
Here's a new butaceous, cutaceous, with a cutius up your gluteus. I'm Jack Faust. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, wait a minute. I heard of you. Bart, uh, a friend of mine. I think she mentioned you. Fat Babs? Complimentary, I hope. She's going to die, you know, in three days' time. L look, I don't know what's going on, okay? Oh, Sophie. A and I don't know who you think I am, but this is creepy and I'm getting out of here. Oh, Sophie. Sophie, Sophie, Popopi. Banana, Fana, Popopi. Me, my, mo, mopi. Sophie. Let's cut the crap. You revealed me. Clearly you have much art. I think I know you from before. You're the magician, the snake handler, the juggler. You introduced yourself to me when I was Bill, and then when I was Barbara. Yes, you know, I always like you when you're at this stage, and you're not yet clearly defined who you are. I thought I'd come and introduce myself to the new girl before she's had time to become prejudiced against me. You mean you thought you'd see how big a threat Sophie poses before she's experienced enough to spot you coming? I take it that useful appearance is merely a glamour you molded for the occasion? Oh, allow an old man his vanities. After all, she is a very attractive young woman. And I'm Jack. Jack the Faust. I like to look my best. And I like to keep up appearances. Were you hoping to seduce her? Oh, please. Give me some credit. I have succubi for that. To be honest, I just wanted to see her before she ended up insane or gutted on an altar somewhere. I mean, you do know how many enemies are gunning for her, don't you? There's a magician called Benny Solomon. I hear he's flying into New York specially to see you. You ought to watch out for him. He sent those demons. Yes, so they told me. He works for the temple. Only on a freelance basis. The temple would never admit to employing a magician. It's against their religion. Still, they want you dead. They think you're going to end the world. Why would they think that? Oh, you're so sweet when you're in this amnesiac in-between state. I almost forget how much I hate you the rest of the time. They think that because you are going to end the world, dummy. But that's not true. You really can't remember anything, can you? Now, personally, I think ending the world's an excellent idea. Any real magician would agree. Prometheus' father certainly did when he unleashed his dying curse upon humanity. That's you, incidentally. Ah, that's better. I see I have your attention. Stacia returns to find Sophie sitting in a trance and holding a raggedy old man's hand. Oh, for Seth's sake. Huh? What? What What did you do? What happened to the other guy? He was a glamour, you vacuous little bimbo. This whole thing is a waste of time. I hope Benny Solomon's boys cut you to pieces. Hey, you leave her be. Up yours, Gidget. And as for you, you're going to get exactly what you deserve. I could have had things real sweet in that beanstalk kingdom if you hadn't bitched everything up. Screw you, lady. Screw you. Well, he sucked. God, when I walked in, he was, like, totally having sex with you. He was not. He was just touching my hand. It was some kind of mind thing he was doing. He he said a lot of stuff. It was all sort of scary and upsetting. Everything was dark, like the library was deserted. He was just some maniac wino. Hey, look what I got. There's all kinds of stuff about Promethea I found on the net. There's this French lesbian writer to this thing, The Book of Promethea, and there's this black metal band called Hecate Enthroned. Stacia. No, but like, they have this number called Promethea, My Darkest Mask of Surreality. Stace, I just read this really sad story about the 18th century Promethea. Then that magician guy jumped me. Kind of shook up and Promethea it out. Can't we just go to college and do something normal? Going into college is normal? This is texture. Mayor Sonny Baskerville, nuts or what? The sleaze inquiry into New York's first multiple personality disorder mayor became more complex today. A new personality called the Squealer claimed that all 42 personalities, including himself, were an elaborate sham. This is Texture. Well, she seems to have survived. 
Well, yes. It was a lucky break, though, her friend coming back like that. <laughs> yeah, and Jack was only messing with her. Anyone else would have just shot her. She's helpless without guidance. Faust was right. Benny Solomon's friends with a howling will pulverize her. God, how many lives did Prometheus' dad screw up? Barbara, honey, you're just upset. Prometheus' existence is necessary. Right, is that what you told yourself when poor crazy Dennis Strucker blew your head off? In case it's escaped the attention of you ladies, I'm the only person here that being Promethea hasn't killed. Damn. Next, No Man's Land. Yupri, 1915. Hello? Hello, lads. Come on, who's awake? Come on, you lazy buggers. Harry? Chalky? Come on, wake up. I'll make us all a cup of tea. How's that? Lads? Oh, God. Oh, God, sissy. God, I'm in a mess. I wish I was home with you and Mum. But I'm done for, sissy. We're all done for. No, God's universe is not itself unkind. There is love, and there is comfort, and soft, sweet wings that gather up the fallen. Your brave young friends are dead. I've come to take you home. Promethea, No Man's Land. I, I've gone already, haven't I? I'm dead, and you're an angel. I've, I've heard of chaps who've seen him. You're not dead, but your foot is wounded and infected. We must get you to safety, swiftly. And I'm not an angel. Not exactly. My name's Promethea. Can you stand? Y yes if you'll help me. I... I can't place your voice. Sometimes you sound like an Arab, sometimes like a Yank. I am a little of both. Dear gracious gods, all of these stinking holes are full of corpses. Children like you. We're, we're men. I'm 18. Well, almost. We're doing this for our country. And, and God's with us. I mean, isn't he? You'd know, wouldn't you? This is what God wants, isn't it? No. This is what God's trying to help us up from. Come with me. We have long, dark miles to tread before the dawn. As Sophie rushes to Barbara in the hospital, she is noticed and remembered by Kenneth, the psychic of the five swell guys. Barbara reassures Sophie that Faust was just trying to mess with her mind about ending the world, and now Sophie has to focus and travel to the Immateria to prepare for the inevitable return of Benny's devils. God. God, it's different every time. Okay. Okay, I'm imagining this. I'm sitting in the hospital, and I'm imagining this. Debatable. Debatable? Why, it's practically intractable. She's clearly sitting here imagining a hospital, yet she claims the complete reverse. I agree. It's worse than intractable. It's unfalsifiable. In fact, it's very near ineffable. What? What? What are you? We are supreme deities of the cosmos. What? We can prove it. We have lovely numbers, and we talk back to front. Do you have anything to trade? Trade? I... I don't remember. Is it that why I came here? Of course it is. You must recall we made arrangements with your aunt. All the important balloons were truncated. Hurry up and decide. It's impeccative. Vermin, be gone. I'll not have pandeliriums in this place. <coughs> I think you heard me. Leave or burn. <coughs> Jeez, what were they? The pandeliriums? Oh, they're just distractions. Gibberish, fluttering thoughts to lead the mind astray. You have to be stern with them. I'm Margaret, by the way. You must be Sophie. Uh, yeah, Sophie Bangs. I guess you're here to meet me because... Because I'm who you thought about most recently. Yes, the rules are surprisingly simple once you know them. I'm glad you came, Sophie. You need counseling. You need advice. Yeah, that's what Barbara said. Listen, first off, I am sitting in a hospital imagining this conversation, right? Well, yes. 
Your body is sitting in a physical location, and this is all in the imagination. Not your imagination, though. The imagination. The imagination? You make it sound like there's only one of them. There is. There's a material world, and there's an immaterial world. Both worlds exist, but in different ways. For example, chairs exist, and so does the idea of chairs. Well, yeah, but, I mean, everybody's imaginations are separate, aren't they? I mean, everyone has their own private mental space. Of course they do, just like their house is their own private physical space. But the territory outdoors belongs to everyone. But if your mind behaves like a place, I mean, every time anyone followed a trail of thought, they'd be walking a pathway in the immateria. Humans are amphibious, Sophie. That means they live in two worlds at once, matter and mind. Yet many people only notice the solid world they've been conditioned to think of as more real, while all about them diamond glaciers creak and star volcanoes thunder. But what about ideas? Why do some people have better ideas than others? Ideas grow like flowers here. Some are common ideas, found everywhere. But if you want the rarer ideas, the more exotic blossoms, you have to travel further. Artists, scientists, philosophers, they're the pioneers of these territories. But you're saying anybody could explore this place if they wanted to? Yes. Yes. That's why Prometheus enemies find her so threatening. It's what she represents. What do you mean? I mean, Jack Faust told you that Prometheus was intended to end the world. In a way, he was right. Prometheus makes people more aware of this vast immaterial realm. Maybe tempts them to explore it. Imagine if too many people followed where she led. It would be like the great Devonian leap from sea to land. Humanity slithering up the beach from one element into another. From matter to mind. We have many names for this event. We call it the rapture. We call it the opening of the 32nd path. We call it the awakening or the revelation or the apocalypse. But end of the world will do. Uh, but the end of the world, that's a bad thing, right? The world isn't the planet or the life and people on it. The world is our systems, our politics, our economies, our ideas of the world. It's our flags and our banknotes and our border wars. I was at Ypres. I was at the Somme. I say end this filthy mess now. Jack Faust, he said Prometheus was her father's dying curse upon humanity. Curse? Prometheus wasn't his curse upon existence. She was his gift to it. Promethea is imagination. What other comfort did those poor boys who died here have? What else except Wilfred Owen's poems, or the Angel of Mons, or Promethea? If you'd have heard them, all those boys, there was nothing I could do. They were calling for their mother. For their... Uh, please excuse me. It's silly, really. I was just a cartoonist. My only concerns were my art, my deadlines, my paycheck. Then Promethea happened to me, and all of a sudden, I felt responsible for the problems of the world, for every avoidable disaster and plague. When the First World War erupted, it felt like a personal failure. But, I mean, wars just happen. How is that a failure on your part? Because Promethea is imagination, and because war, all war and conflict, is naught but the failure of imagination. The four horsemen don't cause the apocalypse. After all, they've been riding for centuries, hanging over our heads. They merely symbolize what life on Earth is already like. They show us why we need an apocalypse. Mankind must imagine a way to rise above the perilous material situation that it has created. That's why Promethea is necessary. But what you're saying, it's like Promethea is the human race's ticket to the Immateria, and the Immateria is like the promised land. So why is everybody, you know, trying to kill me? Here, climb onto this. 
There are some people with a vested interest in keeping the world as it is, because that's the world they have power over. You see, in the immateria, there's no rent, no tax, no property, there's no real estate, no boundary fences, no limits. It's important that you understand how measureless in power and splendor are the territories which you represent. In truth, the beauties of the solid material universe are but a part of the rich spectrum of existence. The one-tenth of an iceberg that is visible above the tide line of reality. Matter is that part of being that is crystallized where the mind's light has petrified to concrete substance. Beyond substance is imagination, the moonlit realm of dream and fiction, sexual fantasy, and the unconscious mind. These lunar attributes, imagination and romance, are the gem-crusted gateways of the immateria. Just the gateway? But I thought dreams and imagination were, like, the whole deal. No, they're just the way in. Beyond the lunar sphere lies the mercurial domain of intellect and science, of magic and of language. Humankind's most precious gift, communication, has its wellspring here. Still, intellect isn't everything. So, like, immateria, it's a map of what's inside people, not just the universe beyond them? The worlds inside and outside us have the same structure, the same pattern. Journeying beyond even the intellectual idea of shape or form, we next traverse the rich Venusian landscape of emotion. Passing that, still more rarefied, more tenuous even than feelings, Love or joy or sorrow lie the golden, solar reaches of the human soul. This is the burnished fleck of self within each individual, the highest human plane within the immateria. Beyond lie the transhuman realms of forces absolute and universal. Whoa, the weather feels like it's getting rougher. We're moving through the stern and martial stratospheres of universal judgment, tilting the very balance of the cosmos. Hold tight, Sophie. Hold tight. Ah, I'm slipping. Where did all these rain clouds come from? Past universal judgment are the sheltering, Jupiterian skies of universal mercy, where the gods of storm and lightning play. Beyond that is the chasm at the far edge of existence, where... Damn, it's no good. We're tipping over. Margaret! Margaret, we're falling! Don't worry. Remember, this whole journey is through your imagination. You can't be hurt. Your body is somewhere else. Sophie lies unconscious at Barbara's side, and the nurses are unable to awaken her. They place her in a bed and room of her own, and Kenneth notices this as well. For a moment, he sees what Sophie is experiencing inside her mind in the immateria. <laughs> What? Uh, Margaret? Margaret, where'd you go? Margaret? Oh, crap. Look, you can get out of this. It's just imagination. You can just open your eyes, right? Okay, on three. One, two. <sighs> or, of course, there's always plan B. Uh, oof. Ah, well, after that imaginary climb, I imagine I'm pretty exhausted. This sucks. This whole thing, it really, really sucks. It's like, they say they want to teach me stuff. I mean, how to get home would be good. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, think. Think hard. This isn't one of the higher levels of the immateria that Margaret talked about. Everything shifts and changes too much. I'm still in the dreamlike region. Maybe I'm in Misty Magic Land or somewhere. Oh god, what if I get lost? Maybe that's what happens to depressed people. Or, or crazy people. They wander out of the safe and sane areas of their minds. They wind up somewhere bad and wild and... And... Uh... Sophie comes to a gate which breathes. Transipality of High Brazil. Neptura's protectorship. Travelers turn back. Surrounding the signs are heads mounted on pikes. Next, Amazing Grace.
Kenneth the Psychic relives the last memory of his unconscious teammate Marv in the hospital. He sees the team fighting the science villain, the painted doll, or something like him anyway, as he gives off no life signs. Roger swings a lamppost with her super strength while the doll leaps around the team's floating platform, kicking and shooting them at will. Unable to help his teammate, Kenneth decides to check on Sophie and investigate the vision of her he received. Making physical contact, he delves into her mind. Sophie is currently running away from large birds ridden by spear-wielding lizard men as they discuss the best way to eat her. At the last moment, she hears a welcome voice. Don't worry, darling. Everything's going to be lovely. Now, if you could just be a sweetie and step to one side. Promethea leaps and spins, swinging her large sword and lopping the heads off both lizard men, leaving the bird mounts untouched. Ah, yes. That's absolutely super. You're... you're another Promethea. No, dear. You're another Promethea. I am the Promethea. I'm Grace Brana, and I'm rather the classic model. Now, could you be an absolute treasure and grab one of these blood roosters from me instead of just goggling? Grace Brana? You did all those Promethea pulp covers in the 1920s. Darling, I lived all those Promethea pulp covers in the 1920s. You've no idea how thoroughly sick one can become of torture chambers, demon altars, hunchbacks, and skeletons. Huh. Yeah. I guess. Listen, my name's Sophie Bangs. I was just with Margaret, the Promethea before you, but then I lost her and ended up here with those lizard men chasing me. They're called man-gators, darling, not lizard men. And I'm perfectly aware who you are. Dear Barbara can't shut up about you tackling that Smee and those imps from the howling. She's very easily impressed, poor thing. Anyway, are you going to saddle up or not? Huh? On this thing? Darling, if you're going to be Promethea, I'm sure you'll end up with much stranger things between your knees. Now, I gather I'm supposed to be riding the next stage of your tuition? What did Margaret teach you? Uh, about war, mostly. Boys calling for their mothers, all that stuff. Frightfully moving, isn't she? Margaret's big on compassion, as symbolized by the cup. That's what she taught you, the way of the cup. Now I'm going to teach you the way of the sword. What, like... Chopping people up and stuff? Oh dear, you're rather literal, aren't you? You see, darling, on this level, everything's symbolic. Everything stands for something else. Swords stand for reason and discrimination. Frankly, dear, they cut through bullshit. And alligator guys. You cut through them too. There's blood all over this saddle. Reason slices through illusion and hallucination, darling. That's all the man-gators are. Nasty little figments dreamed up by a nasty little mind. But even though they're figments, they're still dangerous here? Oh, good God, yes. Eat you from the toes up as soon as look at you. I've been fighting them off for years. After all, darling, High is supposed to be my territory. So, High Brazil, that's like an area of the Immateria, right? Roughly speaking, it overlaps with Fairyland and Tirna Nog, places like that, but basically, it's mine. Or at least it was, until the usurper took it from me. Usurper? But I don't remember your throne getting usurped in any of those old pulp stories. No, this happened since then. In fact, the usurper is the being that wrote those old pulp stories. The being that created the man-gators. In the March 1927 issue of Astonishing, as I recall. His name's Marto Neptura. Oh, God! He's so big! How can you fight anybody who's... Wait a minute. Marto Neptura? Wasn't that just a house pseudonym for any hack who wrote Promethea back in the 20s? Exactly, darling. Neptura's a pseudonym. A harmless fiction. Except here, where he's non-fiction. And non-harmless, for that matter. Promethea! Think not that I do not see thou, little one. Neptura sees all. Stupid man. It's thee, not thou. Hopeless without an editor. Oh well. Let's go and make a few significant cuts in his major passages. Fool! My dark power shall scorch thou! <laughs> ah! If he's imaginary, how come this guy's so powerful? Because he's imaginary writer, dear. Writers shape the stuff of fiction. So here, he can do anything. Follow me through those gates up ahead. Ugh! 
more heads. I saw some of the king's borders earlier. I said he was a writer, Poppet. I didn't say he was a good writer. He repeats himself awfully. He has very few surprises up his sleeve. And frankly, you can see them coming a mile off. Stay behind me and keep your head down. Promethea hacked her way through the wizard's minions while complaining about the wizard's lack of diversity in her foes. She finds his adoration of her physique tiring, as well as the vampiric flying leaves he sends to slow them down. Just then, she notices Kenneth watching them from the outside and addresses him directly. Who do you think you're spying on, you grubby little adolescent? I, uh, my God, she can see me. But how on earth can she possibly... Hey, hey! W what uh, That's my friend! What are you doing to my friend? You're not a doctor! Were you perving on her? Were you? No, I... Uh, look, I wandered into the wrong room. Uh, I'm sorry. Out! Go on, get out! Jeez, every time I leave her alone, I come back, she's unconscious, and there's some old bald guy bailing her up! B but I, I wasn't... Oh, there's your friend now. Kenneth? Hey, you're a nurse. You get this guy out of my friend's room. But, Kenneth, you idiot. You're supposed to be watching Marv. Hey, I know you. You're that new Roger from the Five Soul Guys. So is the old Roger ever coming back? No, he isn't. Come on, Kenneth, we have to talk. Look, I just made a mistake. Sure, like when Marv got shot. Kenneth, the doll's been seen. He may intend on coming back to finish the job. Come on, let's go look at your friend, Miss... Vanderbeer, Stacy of Vanderbeer. I came straight from college when I heard Sophie collapsed. Boy, she's totally out, huh? Yes. Now, answer me honestly. Had Sophie taken anything? Is there any reason she should be like this? I, um, uh, I really can't imagine. <laughs> hmm. Well, at least whoever it was has stopped watching us. Now, if I can just kick this turret door in. Ah! Uh, there. Ow! These leaves are getting worse. Hardly surprising, dear. Nectura's planted a hell oak slap in the middle of my lovely terrace. Be careful to avoid the sap when I cut it back. It tends to blind you and send you mad. There. That's for my uprooted symphony bushes, you scab-eating brute. Ah, Grace. What a picture you are, with thine flashing blade, thine rippling thews. It would make such a magnificent cover painting. And for a caption, hmm, let me think. Ah, I know. Promethea and the Hand of Death. Rippling thews? Oh, you ridiculous creature. Get back, Sophie. He's throwing glob goblins. All right, Neptora. I've finally had about as much of your shaky grammar and leering descriptions as I can bear. Let's see how you spin words without hands or a tongue. Ah. Uh. Of the five writers generally thought to be behind the Neptura pseudonym, Gerald Summers had the most solid plot construction, while Ray Bennett's descriptive passages are often both distinctive and surprisingly good. Sophie? What? Lamont Davies was the most prolific of the Neptura authors, narrowly beating Bernard Hopt, who was also notable for his misogynistic bondage scenes. Ah, uh, what are you doing to me? and astonishing editor Lewis Werner, who seemed obsessed with medieval weaponry. Ah, thou harlot! Sophie, what on earth have you done to him? Ah, uh, well, it was just stuff from my term paper. I figure everybody treats this Neptura guy like he's one person, but really he's like all these different guys. Ha! Huh, what delightful logic! And what swordplay! Swordplay? Well, yes. The sword is reason, and you just wielded one of reason's sharpest tools, which is reductionism. That's the process of breaking down one big problem into lots of little problems. Yeah! Promethea easily kicked the split form of Neptura away. You chopped him into pieces, darling. You know, I'm starting to understand what Barbara sees in you. You really are quite good. Wow. Thanks. Am I as good as you? <laughs> Don't push your luck, dear. No one's as good as me. Now come on, everything's settled, and you have a crash course to be getting on with. Hey, everything looks different. Oh uh, yes, 
That's because I'm imagining it now, rather than a conglomerate of fourth-rate hacks, and I'm an artist. We have a better eye than writer. So is that it? Have I learned everything? Of course not. There are four magical weapons. You've yet to master the wand or the pentacle. Bill will help you. Just take the highway east from High Brazil, and you'll find her. Good luck, darling. And from what I've heard, you're almost certainly going to need it. Benny Solomon has called every demon he can name to destroy Promethea. Let's finish this. Next, Rocks and Hard Places. Protesters have gathered at the hospital to support and oppose the mayor's impending visit, with the currently four swell guys keeping the peace. Inside, Trish has arrived to see how Sophie is doing. Stacy knows more than she can tell Sophie's mom about her condition. Promethea. Rocks and hard places. So, you're Sophie. Oh, you are just the most adorable little thing. I'm Bill. Well, actually, I'm Big Bill at the moment. I'm not as deep or Margaret or witty Grace, but I wanted you to notice me. Uh, Bill? You mean like William? William Wolcott, the comics artist? Oh, bless you. You remember. Strictly speaking, I was the artist writer. But yes, I worked on and was Promethea longer than anyone, 39 through 69. My Promethea wasn't the wisest or the strongest, but I like to think she was the nicest. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, well, no offense, but, well, it's like, you're a guy. How does that work? <sighs> not very well a lot of the time, to tell the truth. And I'm not a guy. William Wolcott was a guy. If anything... I'm his imagination, and Bill's imagination was, well, to be honest, Bill was a gaze of spring lamb. Of course, the expression of the time was confirmed bachelor, and Bill was certainly that. You, Sophie, I'm over here now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess you are. How do you do that with the size and the two places at once and everything? Oh, well, mine is also sort of the silliest Promethea. Always grown to giant or visiting toy town. Actually, I didn't think it was silly. I thought it was playful. It was meant for children. Well, you know, I read a couple of issues from my college term paper. I really liked them. Uh, Big Bill's still back there behind us. Oh, she'll fade away eventually. So how are you finding the immateria? It's scary, but I sort of like it. I met Margaret, then Grace. They taught me about stuff, like the importance of being compassionate, the importance of being smart. Mm, the cup and the sword. Good. So what do you know about coins? What, you mean like money? Well, not exactly. You could call them coins, or pentacles, or discs. They're one of the four magical weapons. Wands, cups, swords, and coins. Fire, water, air, and earth. You're going to need all four elements. Elements? But you said I needed four weapons. Four elements, four magical weapons, four essential human qualities. They're all the same thing, in a way. Spirit, compassion, intellect, and physical existence. You need them all to be Promethea, or to be human. I was the most human, the most earthly of all the Prometheus, all the girls. Actually, that was always my biggest problem. Must be why they've chosen me to teach you about earthly matters, about discs, about coins. Because you were the most involved with the physical world? Honey, involved isn't the word. I was in love with the physical world. All that flesh and sensation. To me, it was like an irresistible fun fair, A carnival. A roadside attraction. Sophie and Bill approach the Mortal Coil Bar and Grill. Ah, uh, so, like, what is this place? Well, we're really far along the road that leads down into matter. And this is kind of a drive through allegory along the way. It's how material existence looks from up here. This looks more like a theme park than a diner. Don't they do any food here? Well, they have various kinds of sustenance on display. All the things that keep people going on the way through life. All the things we have a taste for. 
Life's a running buffet, and honey, I do mean running. So come on, what does Soapy Bangs want on a platter? Maybe a husband? Somebody to love? Perhaps kids one day? It's a very popular choice. Maybe a family would give you the purpose you were looking for. Or maybe money would help make sense of things. Or sex. Lose yourself in pleasure and forget everything else. That was always the big one with me. You could be an intellectual and join the literati. You could be a drunk and join the ope literati. Well, what if you don't choose any of the dishes? Why then, child, you will be hungry. And you'll be hungry for the longest time. It's mortal existence as fast food, Sophie. It's comfort eating. With love and wealth and fame and happiness all no more than a sugar rush. It's life, Sophie. To go. Wow. Listen, that was kind of intense. Can we stop this thing for a while and walk? I'm getting motion sickness. Mm-hmm. Well, life will do that. We can go the rest of the distance on foot. The material of the world isn't far from here. If the wind's right, you can almost smell the sulfur. As the mayor arrives at the hospital, the painted doll surveys the area with binoculars. And he sees Benny Solomon arrive. Huh? Oh my. This ought to be good. Yeah, I keep noticing that Route 32 sign. What is that? There's 32 points in the whole system. 10 spheres, 22 paths. Route 32 is the path connecting matter and imagination. In some ways, it's the most important path. Like I say, you should find a magician to help with this stuff. Or failing that, I suppose you could always ask the snakes. The snakes? What, you mean the ones on the Cacduceus? Or, wait a minute, what's going on with the landscape? It's all getting sort of hyper-real. And so are we. God, what's happening? Everything has this diamond clarity. Hmm. Grace and Barbara say it's like drugs. But I never took drugs, so I wouldn't know. It's just the 30-second path, taking us closer to material reality, so everything sort of crystallizes. It's beautiful. I guess this 30-second path is the scenic route? What things look like isn't as important here as what they symbolize. As for what this path symbolizes, well, it has a name, as well as a route number. Some traditions call this path the world. In the sky, surrounded by four godlike figures, Sophie sees a nude woman and a gigantic snake coiled together. Some call it the universe. Wow. What are they? The snake is the spiraling DNA. It represents all earthly life. The moonlit woman is all dream and fantasy. Do you see, Sophie? It's a wonderful dance between the flesh and the imagination. And some call it the universe. Let's move on. Ahead are more earthly visions. Earthly ideas. Earthly memories. Uh, who is he? He's nobody from my earthly memories. No, he's one of mine. This is Bill Wolcott when I... When he was a young man, he's drawn Promethea with so much passion that, to his surprise, he can physically become Promethea. Bill hadn't necessarily ever wanted to be a woman, but I guess he'd always wanted to be a goddess. It was so much fun, helping people, having adventures, falling in love. Plus, it gave him great material for his comic book. Can't argue with that. There was this FBI man who knew about Promethea's existence. More than that, he fell in love with her. The affair is very passionate. He had no idea of the toned-down comic book version Bill called his FBI agent Dirk Dangerfield. His real name was Dennis Drucker. Dennis Drucker? Wasn't he the guy who killed... I mean... Oh, hush. I'll be getting to that part soon enough. Let me enjoy telling you our fairy tale love story first. It was just so perfect. Dennis was decent, handsome, and straight. That was a decider, if I'm honest. Dennis couldn't believe his luck. He loved the perfect woman, and the sex was fantastic. I mean, sex with Promethea, and there really are fireworks. 
hundreds of little blue stars. But the love was better than the sex. It's like a human man in love with a goddess. Every moment we spent together seemed mythical. Every word shivered like starlight. Every kiss was timeless. God, Sophie, he was great. He was so great. So anyway, guess what happened? Ah, uh, the business about you, about Bill being a guy. Dennis found out? Well, you better look inside here and see for yourself, but basically, yeah. Dennis found out. Sophie sees Dennis shooting Bill Wolcott in the head at his drawing table. Tears in his eyes. Oh, God. God, that's so awful. Yes. And what's most awful is that it came out of nothing except our love. That wonderful, burning, holy thing. It destroyed both of us. Both of you? What happened to Dennis? Take a look and see. It's our Charlton Senate affair with Promethea when she was Anna. These things never end well. Oh. Oh, that's terrible. How long has he been? Nearly thirty years. Thirty years bound and pecked at, eaten by his memories. Promethea was everything to him, and he killed her. He loved me, Sophie. He really, really loved me. Sophie sees Dennis Drucker sitting catatonic in an asylum. That poor man. If he hadn't been so bigoted about... No, don't blame Dennis. I've never told him about Bill. I was being dishonest and I knew it. It just... We were so happy. I... Oh, come on. Let's get out of here. You know, you didn't need to show me that. I mean, if it was going to upset you. Oh, but it was important you should see. You have to understand the dangers of the earthly realm, of getting too attached to it, of loving it too much. Is that possible? To love the world and people too much? Well, perhaps not. After all, you're Promethean now. You're supposed to bring the light of pure spirit down to free earthbound humanity. To do that, I guess you have to love humanity first. But remember, you're not the first to try touching the mortal clay with the flame of the immortal soul. You're not the first fire bringer. Do you ever wonder why our heroine's father chose that particular name for his only daughter? Promethea? Well, I looked it up and all I found was the name of this species, the Promethea moth. And the feminized name of another great storybook figure who tried bringing heavenly fire to illuminate mankind's dark earth. All I'm saying is, Sophie, my child, please be careful. Be careful and be warned. Sophie sees Prometheus, huge in the sky, chained to a rock and eaten by birds. Jeez, then the myth about the chains and the rock and the feasting bird? It's all true. I'll miss the true, Sophie. Given that they last longer, they're even truer than the so-called real world. Speaking of which, seems we're finally here. Isn't this your hospital? I, I guess so. Sort of looks like it. Who is that crowd of people over there? They're all unreal looking like us. I don't know. They look like human personalities. But why there should be such a crowd of them here, I can't imagine. It must be 40 at least. Hmm. Well, we got this multiple personality mayor in New York, but he wouldn't be anywhere around this hospital. Oh, hey, I think that's Marv from the Five Swell Guys. They're like these science heroes? He must be very ill. His spirit looks as if he's wondering whether to leave. Come along. This is where I have to say goodbye. Your body's right through that wall. Take care, Sophie. They got a lot of trouble lined up for you. I... I will. Hey, everything's changing again, the way it looks. Thanks for everything, Bill. I'll see you soon. Saying I'm a bad mother? Listen, raising Sophie without a dad, you have no idea what it was like. Trish, neither have you. Sophie had a new dad every other Friday. Actually, me and the other kids used to envy her. Sophie finally wakes up and stops her mother and best friend from arguing. 
Stacia hugs her, and her mom wants to know if she's on drugs, but before any answers can be given, a loud explosion rocks the hospital. A blasted Roger says the painted doll tossed a bomb into the crowd, which she luckily took the brunt of. The mayor's team move him to safety as Benny Solomon watches the sky. Promethea maimed two of his best and made him look bad to his bosses. The sky is filled with Benny's demon army coming for Promethea. I'm sending all of them. Next, Guys and Dolls. The demons arrive in the hospital lobby and very quickly drop any attempt at disguise. People begin to panic at the sight of them, and the five swell guys debate whether magic is their concern or not, afraid of diverting any focus from the painted doll's attack on the mayor. Your pen? Did Hakomi give you brain damage? She said there's monsters. What, are you going to write a poem about it? Yes, Mom. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now shut up, okay? Yes, Mom. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now shut up, okay? Here's the pen, so... You're useless. You kids, you're useless in an emergency. We should barricade the door. That's no good. They were walking through things. Sophie, is this going to work? I don't know, Stace. Just let me think. Four women and all hell was at the door. And so I thought where none had thought before. My plan was sound. There was no holy writ, no predetermined rule forbidding it. Oh, God, I hear something in the corridor. They're howling. Sophie, they're howling. Had not past writers made their loved ones be a vessel for their muse's majesty? Yet it occurred to me to do still more. For if one, why not with three or four? Ah, I can smell them. It's horrible. I, I feel funny. That doctor, such compassion in her face, who seemed to me not unlike Margaret Case, might thus provide a fleshly chariot for that loving seraph from the fields of war. Or might my mother's life contain less harm if she possessed Bill Wolcott's female charm? What's happening to me? I'm... Oh, God! Jesus! Sophie! Is it you doing that? Oh, God, Sophie, look! Really, don't do this! Sophie! Sophie, help me! Everything's changing! I'm... Ah! Would my companion Stacy's caustic wit, together with Grace Branagh's, make a fit? That fortunate eventuality would leave nobody untransformed save me. As for myself, I'll conjure with a single line the fiction of a mortal made divine. Eyes dark with coal, her breath like ocean breeze. There in her hand, the wand of swift Hermes. Sophie Banks, you total bitch! Don't you dare! Ah! Winged god of scribes who writes the fates of men with the cockadius has his wand, his pen. By his art, let her blazing form descend on me alike with mother, stranger, friend. And in each soul, let burn a single star whose light is all mankind's. Promethea. Guys and Dolls. My dear girl, you've manifested us, and all at once. I can't say I like the material you had to work with, but I'm terribly impressed, darling. Sophie, nobody's ever thought of doing this before. I... Sophie was desperate. That nurse I used to bring Margaret through said there were demons all over the hospital. Yes, it's the entire geisha. What puzzles me is which of us is Promethea now? The original little girl Promethea. All of us. Ah. Uh. The four Prometheus stride out into the hallway to face the demonic horde. Uh, and what in bloody screaming heaven are you supposed to be? We are love. We are beauty. We are art and we are mind. We are Promethea. I'm rather afraid you're all going to die, Poppets. They have the smell of myrrh and womanhood. Do you recognize the rank and order of them? Princely Stolas, Elstad or Elranov, Saturn is strong behind them. This is high, black, female power. I do not like it. No, nor I. These bugs are all over this hospice. We'd best go in separate directions. Sophie, 
Are you okay alone? We taught you cups, swords, and coins, but not wands. We didn't teach you will. Then I'll improvise. That's Soapy's specialty. Let's take them. Wow. Agares. Jesus' teeth. She, she's hurt me. She's got a cockadeus. Fall back, good dukes and princes. Leave the kings to settle with her, Bale or Asmodee. Marcosia said she was strong, but he did not say there were four of her. Actually, there's at least six of it, you little smear of celestial crap, even if Anna here is a non-combatant. But since Sophie left me out of her girl's outing, I guess I have to make my own arrangements. Okay, here goes. God, Steve, baby, I wish you were here. I wish you had the imagination. You imagined I was beautiful, for God's sake. Okay. Okay, let's do this. Hold on, Sophie. Sing over till the fat lady sings. You want wands? I'll show you wands. You want will? I'll show you will. Despite being on the edge of death, Barbara transforms and her Promethea leaps into action, defending the South Tower from, from the demonic horde in one final blaze of glory. Siege of South Tower, Incident 1. The Fat Lady Sings. The five swell guys do their best to fight back the demons who read as condensed energy to their instruments. Bill's Promethea comes to their rescue and then moves to give Margaret's Promethea backup against the King Demon after the area is secure. Siege of South Tower, Incident 2. Bill and Margaret, Jumping Bale. Hmm, sounds nauseous than I was expecting out there tonight. I heard the mayor was in. You hear that? No? Oh well. Wish me luck, loves. My public awaits. Oh, now this is new. I don't think I've killed any of those before. The painted doll flips through the air, shooting at the arrayed demons. Siege of South Tower, Incident 3, Doll Time. No, look, they've sent in the clowns. What are you shooting at, you ludicrous creature? We're from the howling. We can't be killed. Really? Now there's a challenge. Back! Back or bear the scars of me forever! You see? I told you. I told you she was some sort of monster. Barbara, what are you doing here? I didn't have enough bodies to bring you through. I've still got a body, remember? Should last long enough to do what's necessary. How about you? Holding up? I... I think so. I still feel like there's part of me I'm not using. It's the soul, Sophie. The higher self, the wind, the wand. Just let it come. Let it open its wings. Back. Fall back. Rah! She burns. What is this lovely thing that burns, Asmodee? Walk in, your highness, as we report it. She's something unfamiliar. It's all right. We can retreat. The path behind us is clear. Darling. The demons turn to retreat, only to find that Stacy is Promethea is awaiting them. Promethea unleashes blue fire against the demons. Siege of South Tower, Incident 4. Sophie earns her wings. What's happening in there? What are those blue fire bursts? It's taking my guys way too long. Uh, whatever you say, Mr. Solomon. I mean, it felt wrong from the start. Too much unexpected stuff. That nutcase mayor visiting? Those protesters? That bomb? And now this, uh. With his binoculars, Benny watches the chaos from afar. He sees the painted doll as well, though, who has picked Benny out of the crowd as the master of the demons and has brought the chaos to his front door, unveiling a grenade. There, I thought you were the one who brought this Halloween parade along. Well, everybody, don't just stand there. How was I? Huh? Come on, what did you think? No, honestly. Siege of South Tower, Incident 5, Blow Up Doll. The doll explodes, his entire body being the bomb, and Benny Solomon is killed instantly. Leaderless, the demons are now soldiers stranded in enemy territory, and they seek refuge. Siege of South Tower, Incident 6, The Temptation of St. Sonny. They find it, every one of them, in the already crowded mayor with his multiple personalities. 
No one is even sure what they saw was real, and the mayor's outward life goes on as normal, only with someone else in the driver's seat. In the interest of lives going on as normal, the Prometheus all let go of their earthly selves, taking care to wipe their borrowed bodies' memories on the way out as they return to the Immateria. Barbara is the last to go, making sure Sophie does the same before the police arrive. I can do that. I know how to let go of being Promethea, but what about you? Oh, don't worry about me. I can let go and be Promethea just fine. See? There she goes, boiling away into the blue. <laughs> okay, I'm doing it too. I'm thinking about Sophie, about her jeans leaving marks around her belly, about her goddamn term paper. That's, that's good. No. Barbara, I, I'm, shh, just let it go. It's easy. Letting go is easy. We, we let go of being children. We let go of being young and pretty. We let go of being Promethea. We let go of everything. Barbara? Barbara? Next, bringing down the temple. Promethea attacks Benny's club and casino, terrifying his underlings. <laughs> Promethea, bringing down the temple. Holy God! Holy God, kill it! Sal, I, I don't know. Ah! Oh God! Ah! <laughs> ah! What? Uh, what do you want? Your master is killed. His creatures in hiding. Regrettably, one of my kind is also no more. Oh God! Her voice. I'm gonna pee. So tell me, do you value your souls? New York, Monday. I'm really sorry. Would you like to see her? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I would. Oh, God, when did... When did she, you know... She hung on a day or so after we found her out of bed during that... That stuff that happened at the hospital. They pronounced her dead early this morning. Look, you'll probably want a few minutes alone with her. I'll be right outside. Soph, you want me to stay here, or...? This is screwed, Stace. This is so screwed. I mean, look at her. They haven't even closed her eyes. They haven't even... Oh, God, Stace. Oh, God. So, it's okay. Really, it's okay. No. Uh-uh. This is not okay. She helped me fight those demons, and it killed her. Oh, God, her face. It's all cold. It's like marble. I I was going to ask you about the demons. I just remember little flashes. Yeah, well, Grace wiped your memory. My mom doesn't remember anything past that first explosion. Oh, God. Barbara. She was so nice, Stace. She really looked out for me. Nobody's getting away with this. I mean it. Nobody. Los Angeles, Tuesday. So... Once more, your souls, do you value them? Yes, yes. Oh, God, Vince, tell her, tell her what she wants. Look, we value our souls, okay? We value our souls. We don't know anything. Your employer was contracted to kill me. His clients were a group called the Temple. Where are they? Th that was all on the computer. Sal wiped the drive. I see. And this is the device here? Uh, yeah, but, like, Sal wiped it clean. Retrieving the information, it's like, you'd need to be a computer expert, uh... Prometheus staff connects to the computer on a level of pure information. Hmm. There's no address filed under Temple. No contact information. Just a name. Who's Henry Royce? He must be Benny's Temple contact. Uh, look, I promise, we never heard of the guy. It doesn't matter. I'll find him. I am grateful for your help. Change your lives. Ah! Oh, God! Please! Oh, no! Oh, no! 
Promethea leaves them unharmed. Sophie travels to the Immateria to find Barbara's spirit, only to be told by the other Prometheas that she isn't there. What do you mean she's gone? We mean that Mistress Barbara has chosen not to tarry with us now that her mortal round is done. She wished us all farewell. Darling, her actual words were, Damned if I'm spending eternity with a bunch of dried-up has-been bitches like you. But then, that's Barbara. But, I mean, where did she go? She went on. She said she wanted to find Steve, her husband. She went beyond, Sophie. She said to say goodbye. You have to let her go. She's gone into the magic where people can't follow. Forget her, honey. I can't do that, Bill. I'm sorry. I just can't. Next, Sophie goes to Jack Faust and asks him to teach her magic now that Barbara's gone. He says he liked Barbara and he agrees to help Sophie in exchange for sex with Promethea. It's mostly a magical act, more a congress of souls than of bodies and Jack happens to believe that his soul is beautiful. Promethea comes to Henry Royce, an elder of the temple, in his dreams. She appears in a dream of his mother's funeral, replacing her in the casket. He warns the others of his order. Promethea is on to them. New York, Saturday, 2.16 p.m. But, I mean, how did you find this Royce guy? Promethea searched the immateria and happened on one of his dreams. It was easy. Hey, taxi. Oh, right, and just like that, you know his address. You know he's part of this temple thing. Stace, Promethea knows, okay? Yeah, hi, we're going to Burley Drive out in Forest Hills? Burley Drive? So, that's where all the millionaires live. It can't be where this temple is. Look, you asked to come along, okay? Anyway, maybe the temple's underground or something. Now let me concentrate, huh? Wow, I guess this must be the place. What are you going to do? Are you just going to zap everybody or whatever? I don't know what I'm going to do. They're probably expecting me. I mean, they're this ancient occult organization. I think they may even be the ones who killed the original Prometheus dad. Probably it's this huge cult of assassins. They have to be expecting me. So, listen, this decisive action stuff, it's not like you. It's like I don't know you anymore. You wouldn't tell me what that creepy Faust guy said, and... Are, are you getting bigger? Yes, Stacy, listen. I'm still me, but I'm her too now. Everyone's just going to have to get over that. As for Jack Faust, I'm still considering what he said. Ah, that must be the mansion gates ahead. Look, all this stuff, it just scares me, yeah? I mean, it's not even funny. Can't you do this whole big stupid revenge thing some other time? It isn't revenge, and it isn't stupid. Grace was right. I have to strike back immediately. I can end them now, or let them keep hurting people by sparring with them forever. Besides, today is some big temple feast or celebration. But doesn't that mean they'll all be there? Yes. Stacia, this is as far as you go. Call a cab back to town or wait here. It's up to you. I'll handle things from here. I'm sorry, miss. I can see you're one of the performers for Mr. Royce's celebration, but you'll have to show ID before I can let... The guard and gate both fall easily before Promethea as she approaches the house. She's coming. Oh, God. Don't worry, Prue. Don't worry, sweetheart. We've got the weapon. You know who I am. You are Henry Royce. Where is the temple? Yes, harlot of revelations. We know who you are. Just as you surely know us. We are the temple. She reminds me of my baby sister. Emily's dead, Teddy. That demon's enchanting you. I mean, the temple hasn't numbered above a dozen since the twenties. Now there's three, and our heirs. T Teddy, get the weapon. Three of you? Persecuting me across decades? Three of us protecting mankind from you, devil! Behold, we guard the sacred spear! Tremble, creature! This is the very weapon that killed your father centuries ago! His demon blood stains it! Its touch can shrivel you! I... Oh, God! 
Oh, God, Emily, I... I... The look of infinite sadness on her face, Prometheus throws the useless weapon away. Dear gods, how many lives wasted in this idiocy? Henry, I'm sorry, she... Shut up! We must defend our inheritors! Their celebration! No. Your tragic, bloody inheritance goes no further. Your followers and their occult rituals shall be finally silenced. Prometheus throws wide the door they are guarding to find a children's birthday party and banners reading Happy Birthday Simon and Jenny. Children? They are the temple's future, which raised to guard the world from the coming apocalypse and from the whore clad in scarlet and gold who is its harbinger. The, the children, in Christ's name, don't harm them. You dare? You dare invoke the name of Christ when you have murdered, when you have made compact with hell? The Lord Christ is more kin to me than you could ever comprehend. We are both sacred. We are both stories. And we were only ever meant to let more light in. You misunderstand. And you kill. And, and you kill. And you... You... I... I'm sorry. I've come crashing in and spoiled your birthday party, haven't I? I didn't mean for that to happen. I'll go away now. What? What's she doing? Don't trust her children. I'll tell you what. To make up for being rude and coming here uninvited, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you where I come from and what I stand for. Watch carefully now. Goodbye. Enjoy that cake. On the lawn, Promethea manifests a wide array of fantasy creatures and characters, just for a few moments making real the world of the imagination. The children look on in wonder and fascination, but with no fear. Don't look! Children, don't look! They're things from hell! Grandpa, don't! You're spoiling it! Oh, look! Oh, look! They're going! The children begin to follow her into the yard. Then the Pied Piper of Hamelin turns and delivers a grave warning to the elders of the temple. Oh, by the by, I leave yon good wife be in future. She's got friends, that one has. Keep off, or I'll come calling. And nobody wants that. Cheerio for now. They all vanish, leaving nothing but the smile on the children's faces. New York, Sunday. Okay. Sophie seeks out Jack and agrees to his proposal. Next, sex, stars, and serpents. This is... This is really horrible. And, like, this is where you'd bring a goddess? Oh, please. Demigoddess at best. Look, you want me to teach you magic or not? You don't like this place? You can split. Anyway, I thought you were supposed to be changing into somebody more comfortable. I am. Listen, I'm doing this because the Promethea bit of me says it's all right. But, like, I'm going to be sort of present too, you know? So don't be gross, okay? Now, I just have to finish this couplet. Yeah, well, finish it already and get lost. If I got to look at some skinny kid, I might have trouble summoning my magical will, so to speak. Okay, I'm all robed up. Ready or not? Here I come. Promethea, sex, stars, and serpents. Oh, this, this is awkward. I hadn't expected you to be, to be so wonderful. Would, would you rather I wore glamour? No, I prefer to see the truth. Truth is beauty. I believe Einstein said that. To be honest, I'd rather you wore a condom. That won't be necessary. I practice a tantric discipline, so there's no omission. Actually, our first act should be striptease. Striptease? Isn't that rather worldly? Not at all. Here, let's sit on the bed, and I'll tell you about striptease. I'll tell you about Inanna. 
Jack explains what each piece of Promethea's armor represents as she removes them, for Sophie's benefit, who is more like an audience member for the moment. He explains the significance of Promethea's breasts as symbols of nourishment and life, but when it's time to explain the significance beneath her girdle, he falls speechless in awe. In the magical view of sex, the woman represents the cup and the man represents the wand. These are spiritual icons and forms more than body parts, so the last thing Alan wants to do is try and box anyone into traditional gender roles. I try to only see the magical meaning of these things. The wand is the will to penetrate the mystery that is the cup or, as the magician himself, penetrates the mystery that is magic. Jack charts their spiritual energy as it rises through the body's chakras during the act. Here, Alan provides a basic breakdown of tantric sex, which I welcome you to look into on your own, if you wish. I don't want to get too deep into magical sex on YouTube. The basics are all the story needs. At the moment of climax, time seems to stop as Jack and Promethea feel a sense of unity with lovers throughout all of history and across reality in the Immateria. Hi. Uh, hi. This is, uh, sort of embarrassing. When did I change back? I don't know. I was kind of drifting myself. When I opened my eyes, there you were. That was, uh, pretty good, huh? Yeah. Yes, it was. I guess you're not bad for a creepy old perverted guy. You want to hook me up? Sure. Over a know-nothing devil-dodging mall rat, you're almost bearable. Still want me to teach you magic? You mean there's more? <laughs> well, yeah. You got about a thousand years of books to read just for homework. I mean, this ain't college. You don't graduate just because you screwed the tutor. I'm kidding. Come here. You're okay, Sophie. If you don't go nuts, you might make a halfway decent magician. Here, I'm going to give you Crowley's Magic Without Tears and 777, plus some other stuff. Fias Levy, like that. Wasn't Crowley sort of evil? Nah, I don't think so. I think at worst he was selfish, maybe silly sometimes. But he knew a lot about magic. Take these and judge for yourself. Thanks. When should I bring him back? When you bred him. Or if you need help with anything. And listen, if you're studying magic for the reason I think, then be careful, okay? Sort of like you. Don't get hurt, huh? I like you too. Take care, Jack. So what time do you call this? It, it isn't what you think. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. See, I thought you'd been humping some hippie while I stood out here for like two hours to make sure you were okay. You didn't, right? Have sex with him? We... I was interested in learning about magic. He, um, I mean, all these great books, he loaned them to me. You did. You totally humped the hippie. Tell me you used a rubber. This is texture. Sonny Baskerville's ratings rocket. I was Promethea, okay? She's disease proof. She can get pregnant, but Jack does this tantric stuff where there's no climax. You were promiscua? So this was a threesome? Liberals today applauded the mayor's decision to abolish religious instruction in the city's schools. Stacia, it wasn't like... You are just such a degenerate. They ought to study you and your mom. They could isolate the slut gene. So, how far did you go? While ethnic groups approved his plans for a new aeon of blackness. Only just above the crown of my head. Jeez, what do you think I am? Meanwhile, in other news... Elastigel manufacturers insist their twangible techno-goop is Y2K compliant. Are they stretching the truth? This is texture. Next, Tsunami. New Year's Eve, 1999, and the five swell guys express worry over the Elastigel products serving all over society not being Y2K compliant. There are Elastipets, Elastigel clothing, a sexual form known as Joy Gel, all of them composed of networks of tiny, flexible computers. Trophies of the Five Swell Guys' adventures around their base give a hint of their history. So, all this magic stuff you're learning? What is that? It's, well, it's since Barbara died. See, she's not even in the Immateria anymore. I guess I just want to know where she went. Bill once said I should ask the snakes about stuff like that, but I don't know. Incidentally, Stace, that is a cool jacket. We're just 12 seconds from midnight. 10, 9, 8, 
So, you're an unfortunate ghetto kid whose mom spent all the Christmas money on pina colada flavor condoms. I was tactless even mentioning my jacket. Can we still be pals despite the social gulf dividing us? Stacia, there's a species gulf dividing us. Now shut up and let's watch everything millenniate or whatever. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Millennium, everyone. Brought to you by Texture. Eee! It's 2000! We're futuristic! Happy New Year, Sophie! Yeah, okay. Happy New Year, Stace. Stace, you can let go now. Um, actually, I totally can't. It's a jacket. It feels all wriggly. Stacia, yeah, I know that. I know it feels wriggly. It's crawling inside my shirt. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy... Hey, wait a minute. What's up with all the balloons and shit? So, get it off me. It's crawling... Stacia, oh, Jesus. Oh, God, the blimps. Look at the blimps. They're... What the fuck are they doing? They're... It's like they're melting or boiling or something. Yeah, I got it. Ah, I got it. I got it off. Stamping it or something. Oh, like I'm gonna do that? That's my Christmas present. Christ. Get these pants off me. Oh, God, they're grabbing me. Get them off. It's the elastigel. It's the fucking elastigel. It's all going wrong. It's the end. It's the end of the world. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, this is really scary. It's just running all over the place like soup. Oh, Jesus. Everybody's going nuts. We're going to get trampled. Let, let none be harmed, none slain in the affray. Away, day, they, um, okay. Let me be she, that she might succor they. Ah, oh God, Bo, oh, please. We gotta get out of here. We really gotta get out of here. Sophie, look, it's all running together. Let mortal form, let mortal form be done with, folded, furled, and let, dee da, dee da, and let Promethea walk in the world. Sophie? Sophie is transformed and now flies into the air to survey the scene. She sees all the elastigel in the city pooling together into one monstrous entity, moving as if it is conscious. Promethea. Tsunami. Oh, jeez! It's the Millennium Slug! Ah! Please, everyone, try to stay calm. You know me in your hearts. You know me. I'm Promethea. I'm here to help. The slug flails a massive tentacle at a police ship, and Promethea comes to the rescue. She flies into the falling ship and asks the terrified pilots to hold on to her. She flies with them across the carnage as the elastigel creature flails wildly, destroying cars and damaging buildings. She sets them all down a safe distance away. When Promethea returns to the crisis, she is hailed by the five swell guys, and they decide to work together. Since one of their number relied on an elastic chair, they're short-handed. Promethea asks if heat might be a solution, and the guys begin to build a heat ray. Promethea stabs the mass with her staff, unleashing holy fire in the form of magic lightning. My name is Promethea, and I am not unfamiliar with fire. It's working. The stuff's flinching back away from her. How's our blaster coming, Stan? Nearly there, bud. Just gotta improvise a photon accelerator from this old light bulb. Ah, <sighs> there you go. Nice work, Stan. If we keep our combined efforts, maybe we can herd it into the river. You're right. Only a little more applied pressure is needed. As the heroes try to herd the mass into the river, it reacts to them, crashing them all down to its mass with a tidal wave. We're almost there. Whoa! <laughs> ah! Marv, hang on! The five swell guys barely hang onto their platform as Promethea flies free of the gel ocean. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. I got it. Ah, ah, so much for hurting into the river. It's already a river, and it doesn't like being herded. I, I think I know how you could stop it. The wand you have with the snakes, that's connected with Hermes, right? The god of language and communication. Uh, I mean, computer programs are just language. Maybe you could talk to that thing? Hmm, you know, Kenneth, is it? Kenneth, you may not be as inept as you seem. Come then, synthetic one. Let us reason together. God. God, look at her. Promethea extends a connection, a magical conduit of pure information attempting to communicate with the creature. 
She begins to speak in computer code. Look, it's all running together into a column. She waves her hand and it changes shape to follow the movement. It's, it's like she's dancing with it. Man, that is what I call one smooth piece of engineering. She's building it into something, but what is it? It's, oh. The elastigel has formed itself at her direction in Prometheus Kardukia's staff. All part of the show, everyone. There's no need to be afraid. After an hour, it'll slowly break down into individual beads and trickle away. You people have a good night and a happy new century. All part of the show. Huh. <laughs> Beginner's luck. Later, Promethea talks to the magical serpent on her staff. <sighs> Alright, this is the situation. I feel I need to take a long journey soon to find someone. A journey into magic. I've read a lot of the books. I understand the ideas intellectually, I suppose, but I don't really feel them. I need to see more. You know, I feel silly doing it. Bill said I should ask you guys. So, what do you say? He's Mac. I'm Mike. We only look alike. He says yes. I say no. He's above and I'm below. So macro's him and micro's me. Pray, how may we enlighten thee? I need to understand magic, and I think I've reached a point where just studied in books isn't enough. I need to understand it from inside. Uh, remind me which of you is which again? He's Mike. I'm Mac. One's white, the other's black. We'll show you magic if you like. Oh, by the way, he's Mac. I'm Mike. To enter magic, in a sense, means entering our intelligence. That record-breaking smash-head show, the theater of what we know, where thoughts parade in fancy dress upon the stage of consciousness. Costumed as acrobat or clown, they somersault, turn upside down. Here, words are juggled, ideas spin, that fade the world outside. Step in. External things dissolve like mist, inside are thrills none may resist. Draw matter's tent flaps back and find the magic circus of the mind. Next issue, perhaps the strangest comic reading experience of the decade. You must not miss. Metaphor. End of part one. Promethea part two will detail Sophie's journey into the afterlife and magic, both deeper realms of the immateria where Barbara went on to. Upon finding Barbara, she will continue to help her find her lost husband somewhere in eternity, and they will travel up through the Tree of Life, exploring every level the energy of creation takes to manifest in the physical plane, up to the godhead of all and the highest point of self. In case it's not explicit, the journeys are mirrored. To explore the deepest reaches of magic and the beyond is also to explore the depths of one's own soul, and this symbology will be mirrored throughout the journey. It really is the best part of this book. A grand adventure that asks you to believe in nothing, but only to explore the imagination. And if you aren't excited to explore the imagination with Alan Moore, then I'm shocked you made it to the end of this video. Please do join me next time for part two of Alan Moore's Promethea. Should be up in two weeks. In the meantime, you can also explore Alan's imagination in The Mindscape of Alan Moore, a film he made in which Alan stares directly into the camera and speaks to you as an audience member about his life, his ideas, his magic, and his work. I should clarify, in short, Alan's idea of magic is an extremely realistic and practical one. He writes words, which artists add art to, and printers print, and then we read them and imagine them into our realities, and from there, his ideas might just affect the world. It's very literal, but there is a kind of magic to it. The magic of storytelling. This is all in Mindscape, and it's a very interesting thing to watch. Okay, see you next time. Thanks for watching.